AI and automation are a natural pairing like peanut butter and jelly, maple and bacon, or pizza and pineapple. You can take the ability of an AI like Claude to generate and analyze text and combine it with automation's time-saving potential and you've got a fast, efficient, and effective workflow. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company, and today I'm going to show you how to automate Claude by Anthropic with Zapier. First, I'll give you a brief overview of what Zapier is and what it does for the uninitiated. Then I'll show you how to set up your Anthropic account and connect it to Zapier. Finally, I'll walk you through the process of building an example automation that sends a prompt to Claude to extract action items from any email that you tag with a custom label. If you'd like to learn more about building AI-powered workflow automations yourself, check out our website at xray.tech and explore our blog for more tutorials. On our site, you'll also find the services we offer and the products we've built for workflow designers of the future like you. Now let's get started. Before we dive into automating Claude, I want to quickly go over what Zapier is and how it works for anyone who might not be familiar. If you're already a Zapier Pro, you can check out this video's chapters in the description and skip ahead. Zapier is a no-code automation provider. It lets you build automated workflows by connecting your web apps together. So when an event happens in one app, one or more automatic events will be performed in other apps. For instance, in this automation, or Zap, we're going to build today, everything kicks off when we apply a custom label to an email in Gmail. Then Zapier sends a pre-configured prompt to Claude that includes text from the email's body. Finally, it automatically sends an email back to us with the action items that Claude extracted from the original email. In short, it will give you a summary with a single click and you don't need to write any code to build it. You should know that even though we're going to connect Gmail and Claude in this tutorial, Zapier supports over 7,500 apps right now and that number's always growing. So odds are Zapier can automate the apps you're already using every day. While Zapier does have a free plan, you'll need a paid plan to build automations like this that have more than two steps. You can learn more about using Zapier in our Zapier Beginner's Guide linked on your screen now. You can also find it in the resources board linked in the description. If you're brand new to Zapier, I'd really recommend checking out that guide before proceeding with this tutorial. Note that Zapier's UI has already changed in the few months since we posted that video, because again, they are constantly updating stuff but everything still works exactly the same under the hood. Now, to get ready to start automating Claude with Zapier, you'll need to set up an Anthropic console account, and you'll need to set up an API billing plan. That's because Zapier is going to access Anthropic through its API, or Application Programming Interface. You can learn more about what APIs are and how they work in the resources board linked in the description. If you've already created an Anthropic console account, you can skip to the next chapter of this video where we'll connect Anthropic to Zapier go to console.anthropic.com. Sign in with your existing Anthropic account or create a new one. If you're making a new account, you'll need to provide a couple of details about your organization. Once you're signed in, click on Settings, then choose Plans and Billing. New Anthropic console accounts always begin on the Evaluation Plan, which doesn't grant access to Anthropic's API. Click on Select Plan to see your options. You can either go with the build plan, which will require you to load up your account with prepaid credits, or the scale plan, which will bill you monthly for your activity. The scale plan will also require you to contact Anthropic's sales team. So to get set up fast, it's best to go with the build plan. You'll just have to provide some details about how you plan to use Claude and where you're located. Then you can add a payment method and credits here. Note that you won't need to pay any kind of subscription fee. You'll only be charged for the credits you add to your account. And the good news is that running prompts through Claude's API is generally going to be very cheap, often just a cent or less for each one. You can learn more about pricing details on this page, also linked in the resources board down below. Once you've created a console account and added a payment method, you'll be ready to connect Anthropic to Zapier. To connect Anthropic to Zapier, start by signing in to Zapier. Click on Apps in the left-hand menu, then choose Add Connection. Search for Claude or Anthropic to find the app, and choose it from the list of results. You just need one piece of information to authorize Zapier to access your Anthropic account, an API key. To create an API key, go back to the Anthropic console. You can follow Zapier's handy link right here. Then, on this API keys page in the Settings tab, just click on Create Key. Give your key a unique and descriptive name so that you know what it's for. You'll be able to track usage by key, so I'd recommend naming it something like Zapier's key. 
so you can see how much API activity is coming from your zaps. You could even make a different API key for each zap you're running so you can really track how much each one is using. Then make sure to copy the key before closing this window since Anthropic won't reveal it to you again. Paste it into Zapier and click continue. Now your Anthropic connection in Zapier is all set and you're ready to start building an automation. To build a zap that automates Claude, begin by clicking on zaps, then create a new zap. As I mentioned earlier, the automation we're going to build will start whenever we apply a custom label to an email in Gmail, but you could use Outlook or any other app you want. Even though we're going to be building an automation that uses Gmail specifically, the same principles will apply to any other app that you want to connect with Claude. So if you want to build an automation that launches prompts from Microsoft Teams or from HubSpot, the information in this tutorial will still be helpful. This is just one specific example that illustrates some general concepts. I'll start by making our test data first. I'll create a custom label, summarize with Claude, and add it to an email so that we'll have some test data to work with as we're building the automation. Always make sure to have some test data to use before you build your automation. Here's a perfect candidate, exactly the kind of wordy, demanding email you're probably all too familiar with. Don't worry, it's not real. We wouldn't let anyone like this work at X-Ray. Now, back in Zapier, our Zap needs to start with a trigger that launches the automation. For us, that's going to happen in Gmail, and the actual triggering event is going to be a newly labeled email. Note that you will need to connect your Google account to automate it with Zapier, but you won't need to mess around with API keys or anything. You'll just need to sign in with Google and click a button to approve Zapier. Configuring this trigger is dead simple. All we have to do is identify the label that we want the automation to trigger for. In this case, that will be our custom label, summarized with Claude. Now, we can give it a test to pull in some test data. This test data is required to build the other steps in the automation and will show us what kind of information Zapier can retrieve and work with. After our successful test, we can see a bunch of data, like the email addresses of the sender and recipient, the body of the email, and a ton of stuff that is, frankly, pointless 99% of the time. But hey, you'll be glad to have it in those 1% circumstances. Now we can add a step to this Zap that sends a prompt to Claude. Add an action and choose Anthropic Claude as the app. For the time being, there's only one choice for the action, send message. So pick that and choose your connected Anthropic account if it's not already selected. Then click continue. Unlike the trigger, there are several options to configure here and you can find even more by setting show advanced options to true. You can find out more about each of these fields by clicking on their titles to see a helpful tooltip, but I'll try to go over all of them quickly right now. Right off the bat, just bear in mind that only fields marked with an asterisk are required. So you can just fill out your message and leave everything else to its default and you'll be good to go. But configuring your action a little more precisely usually pays off. So first, we've got the aforementioned user message field. Here, you're just going to enter a prompt pretty much like you would if you were chatting with Claude directly. The most important difference is that you can also include dynamic data retrieved from previous steps in the zap. For example, we can include the body of the email that triggered the zap so that Claude can analyze it and find action items. Next, under System, we can provide instructions for the role that Claude should assume. Entering additional information here can help shape Claude's style and approach for answering your user message. Next, you can choose a model to use. Check out the linked page for more information about pricing and performance to inform your choice. I'd recommend going with a faster model for any Zap that uses Claude. Zapier won't wait forever for a response, so you'll have to prioritize getting a reply quickly, even if that means you can't always use the latest and greatest model. In the memory key field, you can provide a unique key to connect your conversation with previous ones. So if you use the email action items key, then Claude can use previous conversations with the email action items key as context until it hits its context limit. This can be a good way to give your conversations more depth and to improve the results over time. Next, we have an option to upload images so Claude can use vision to analyze them. I won't attach an image to this prompt, but keep in mind you could add an image here as dynamic data retrieved from earlier steps, like maybe an image attached to the original email. Here, you can set a token limit if you want to keep the response short and your API charges low. Finally, there are settings for temperature, top K, and top P. All of these settings are about changing the predictability or creativity of the AI. I won't get into all the technical nuts and bolts about how these work, 
If you're interested in the gory details, I've thrown some IBM documentation about the subject into the resources board. But for most users, just reading the descriptions here in Zapier will be just fine. I'll set the temperature to 0.7 to make answers a little more creative, but not all the way to the max of 1. Now, the prompt is all set, so we can give it a test. Note that running a test on a Claude prompt in Zapier will actually send the prompt to Anthropic's API and will incur a small charge in your account. In Zapier, the term test can be a little misleading. It's really going to actually perform the action in this case. My test was successful, and I can scroll down past our user message to see Claude's answer. Not bad. This definitely produces a much more readable list of tasks than what old Bill sent over in his email. But you can always tweak your prompt, system message, and settings to fine-tune your results if you're not satisfied. I recommend asking Claude directly how to improve your prompt. Now that we've got a response from the AI, the last thing we need to do is to make sure the output actually gets sent to us somewhere where we can easily read it. Again, you could send it to thousands of different apps, but I'll just go ahead with the logical choice and send it right back to my Gmail inbox. Add another action to the Zap, and choose Gmail as the app again. For the action, I'm going to choose Reply to Email, then continue to the configuration. Now, you might get this warning about potentially creating a loop. You might see warnings in Zapier when you have a trigger and an action in the same app, since it's theoretically possible for the Zap to be triggered for a new email in Gmail create a new email, get triggered again for the new email it just created, and run again, and so on. However, that never happened while testing this setup, and it really shouldn't occur here. The trigger is looking for newly labeled emails. It runs once after you tag an email for the first time. Adding a reply to an already tagged email shouldn't make it run again. The only way you'd create a loop here is if you had rules set up in Gmail to automatically add this label to certain messages. You can also use the flood protection setting here in the left-hand menu to make sure your automation doesn't process an excessive number of requests all at once. But if you're concerned about this, you could always just make a send email action, so your message won't be connected to the same labeled thread. I just think it's a bit neater to get the email as a reply to the original message. Now with that out of the way, let's actually configure this message. First, we need to identify a thread to reply to. Change this to custom instead of static and insert the thread ID retrieved from the trigger. For the to email, just enter your own email. By only entering our own email here, we can make sure that the reply doesn't get sent to the original sender. It's for our eyes only. CC and BCC are optional, but you will need to enter a from email. That can be your email address again. And you'll also need a from name. We'll keep the body type as plain type up a brief message, and insert Claude's response from the previous step. It's the response content text variable. Don't need to add any labels or attachments, so we can continue and test. I'll just check my inbox to be sure. And here's a new message with the same summary we saw before in Zapier. Great. Now we can turn it on and start using it. Once it's on, it will trigger after you add a label to an email. However, it won't be immediate. Zapier will check for new emails at set intervals, which you can see here in the left-hand menu. Depending on your plan, you may have to wait up to 15 minutes, but on higher subscription levels, you can reduce the wait time down to just a minute. So this Zap is all set. Anthropic and Zapier are a winning combination that will help you line up your daily tasks and knock them down in record time. Getting started is easy, and after you've completed this tutorial, you can try connecting Anthropic to any other app you want. If you enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources Board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.